Hey everybody. So today I have two interesting topics I'm going to touch on in a little bit of depth. And the first of which it is emergent behavior in large language models. I ran across a presentation by Jason Way, who is a researcher that had been at Google, now at OpenAI, working on ChatGPT. And he had a pretty good presentation about how large language models at a certain size of the number of parameters, the number of training tokens, the amount of compute poured into them, they don't scale up linearly. That is, if you look at very small, when they grow, there's no change at all in their ability to do certain tasks of any statistical significance. They begin terrible and they remain terrible. But at some point, there's a change where something about the sum of these parts, right, the number of parameters, the amount of training going on changes, and suddenly they're able to, they're empowered with capabilities they didn't have before. They begin to have this, like I said, emergent behavior where they start to become good at things that you would not otherwise see in a smaller model. Things like arithmetic is a great example, right? If you take a very small language model and you trace a very small to a small to a medium language model, there is really no change in their ability to do arithmetic. They might stumble into a correct answer. However, they don't really extrapolate anything. But then at a certain scale of the model, they begin to get the answers more correct. And there's nothing that's changed about the training process. It's the number of parameters and the number of training tokens used in the training set. We start to see this emergent behavior. I'm going to pop this graph up. You can get a look at these. I totally recommend uh, reading the paper. I put a link on my Twitter. It's Matt Wallace on Twitter. This is a great thing to be familiar with. And I think it leads to more questions than answers, why this is and what sort of emergent behaviors we will see in other models that are not LLMs, as well as in LLMs at larger sizes. And then possibly if they're provocable, right? There may be things about the way that an LLM is currently trained that lead to these emergent behaviors, but there might be optimizations that can be made to literally encourage the emergent behaviors. The second thing I wanted to talk about is really about how AI tools need to be used in the real world in order to build products and applications on them to a certain extent. The availability of the OpenAI APIs and other AI APIs is certainly encouraging a lot of people to go out and build things and integrate things into products. Challenge is that LLMs are not an island. You can't just plug into a process. It's not an infallible oracle by any stretch of the imagination. We certainly see attempts to get iterative processes baked in. So tools like Langchain that I've talked about before, or pieces of software like AutoGPT are trying to change the scope of that. I want to talk a little bit more today, though, about one specific thing that came from a team of researchers at Microsoft. And I will flash up basically one of their things directly from their GitHub page so you can take a look at it. But you can see here, they have this idea of you want to solve a programming problem, right? And this could be, dear chat GPT, I want to balance a binary tree. If you start off with a problem and you can state a piece of code that needs to be written, you can either state it in natural language and then have it write the code. And then you could, in theory, ask it to generate tests for that code, or you actually start with a test and then ask it to write code that will pass the test. You would want to provide functional description as well. You don't want it to uh, over tune its answer to just pass the test when it's inappropriate, but either way as a way of describing what good looks like. Now, the interesting thing is what the Microsoft team did was show better code generation by generating tests and code. In the code generation from the Code T team at Microsoft, they were literally looking at this particular data set where they had basically a nearly 20% absolute increase in successful code generation using this architecture around Code T, code generation with generated tests, which to the point here, it's not you handing a test in that it has to pass, it's it both generating the code and generating the test and then making sure that it can pass it. I think this is really powerful though in the context of thinking about how you leverage an LLM because you don't naively have to ask a single LLM a question. It's possible for you to ask one ML service for an answer and then go and validate it with another. I think that the thing that's really interesting though about the Code T paper that really applies to anybody who's building a product or a service with AI today is this really gives you an idea of how these things are not necessarily immediately accurate, but it's not always that difficult to improve the accuracy. And so the idea that you can basically chain multiple services together in order to get a re better result is something you definitely have to be thinking about. Do you generate code only, or do you generate code and a test? And then ideally use the test to test the code. 
You can also be saying, generate me 20 ideas. Maybe instead of asking for 20 ideas, you ask for 20, feed them into another thing, and you ask, are these good ideas? Tell me which ones I should most want to remove. And then you go back to the original model and say, keep 1, 5, 7, 9, 13, and 12, and generate me another list that includes those and more new ideas. That ability to force language models to iterate on a task where itself or another language model acts as a gatekeeper is probably an interesting area of exploration. In fact, it's even possible in my mind to create a sort of ensemble learning between language models at inference time. One of the ways that ensemble learning classically works is that you are able to train multiple models and they're all able to infer to try to solve a task. And then you, either through a voting mechanism or a meta model, then do another stage of inference to decide how you should take the voting of each of the models. I think it's entirely reasonable to think about this in the same way. You might, as a large service at scale, be doing inference against two, three, five APIs, and you might, over time, track how the feedback works for that for an accuracy perspective, and over time build your own model about which models have the most weight uh, in terms of their vote toward the final answer in a certain circumstance. So even if you're not building your own foundational models, you're not even fine tuning on top of them, it's potentially possible for you to use multiple foundational models and then tune against the results in order to get a better outcome for your product or service. So definitely worth thinking about both in the context of how it happens in the micro in this code T paper, as well as what you can do with your own product as you start to leverage AI services. Hopefully that was some food for thought for you today. Please follow me and subscribe. I'm going to have more tidbits coming at you soon.